It's, 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 it's Thursday in the club. It's almost Friday and the weekend. Whew, it has been a hell of a week here in the shop. The heat has been suffocating. We saw a solar eclipse. I uh, saw some naked dude run down the street. It has been pretty freaking awesome this week. But that is not concerning you guys. What concerns you guys is good information on building your forge. And this time around, we're going to be talking about the brake rotor forge. Now, when I was first getting started, a lot of times it was referred to as the brake drum forge. A lot of the information that was out there to begin with, I actually used the brake drum, which is normally on the back of the vehicles. It has a much deeper pot, uh, but later the prevailing wisdom now is of course to use a brake rotor, which is a shallower pot. Uh, for a lot of you guys just beginning, you kind of go overboard. I've seen people actually make coal forges out of tractor trailer drums. Uh, and that's just way too deep, wastes a lot of fuel, it's not a good idea. So a brake rotor uh, is usually found on the front side of the vehicle, and if you're going for one in particular, look for a, a full-size pickup truck. A Chevy 1500, for example, will have a brake rotor of the appropriate size that you need. Now again, you can use anything, but an ideal situation for a brake rotor is going to be that Chevy 1500 somewhere along in there, or the Ford equivalent. So. A couple things before we get in there. This design has been around for a long time. I think these plants have been on Abana. There's really not a lot of rocket science to it, but it, it's not free. Um, you know, the, the brake rotor forge has been put forth as the beginner's forge, and it's uh, I'm kind of going against the common logic here in the fact of saying that if you really don't have a lot of money, this is not your first option. That box of dirt is your first option, is the cheapest option, but if you've got a little bit of extra money, maybe have access to some pipe and some things like that, this may be a better deal. But I, I have to tell you in the years and the many number of these guys I have made, it is, it is an effort to put one of these guys together, even for a shop like mine. Uh, that's why they're not readily available out there. There are better alternatives. Uh, this will work, but I would like you to pull across my argument from my previous video. Uh, this is very much a sliding glass door argument. It is not, can you slam your wiener in the sliding glass door? It is, should you slam your wiener in the sliding glass door? This will work. It's going to cost you a little bit of money. It will function, but there can be better options out there. But having said that, let's get into the nitty gritty of how you're going to put one of these bad boys together. So. As we discussed, you're going to want to look for a brake rotor, not a brake drum, off of a, a full-size pickup truck. Um, you're going to need some two-inch non-galvanized pipe. Now, this is known as black iron pipe. A lot of the times, uh, any of your local uh, supply stores will carry it. Here in the States, of course, that's going to be Lowe's or Home Depot. But a two-inch piece or two-inch uh, black iron pipe is where you're going to want to be at, and you're going to want that in a couple different pieces. So, <clears throat> let's go over parts. And again, let me stress non-galvanized. Uh, now, of course, I don't want to fall into the thing that it's going to, you know, galvanize, burn galvanize, going to kill you dead on the spot. It's not good for you. It's not health, healthy for you. And for you beginners out there that are trying just not to get your wiener caught up in your forge, play it safe. Go with black iron pipe. So, third, let's talk about the parts you're going to need. And thankfully, the parts list is pretty simple. And I've got it listed out here for you. You're going to need one truck rotor. Ooh, that light's pretty bad on there. You can't see much of anything. Ah, there we go. Okay. We're going to need one truck rotor off of a 1500 uh, truck. You're going to need one two inch flange. Now, this piece just looks like a little donut. It's got a threaded hole in the middle. And what this does is this fits onto the end of one piece of the pipe. And this piece will actually, it looks like this, this will actually bolt to the bottom of your brake rotor. Uh, then you're going to need two six inch pieces of two inch pipe. Now, when you go to the store to buy this stuff, uh, a lot of times they're going to have pieces that are already cut to length and they're threaded. Uh, this six inch piece, uh, a short piece of threaded pipes often known as a nipple. So this would be two nipples, six inches long of two inch pipe. Uh, then you will need one piece of 12 inch black iron pipe a two inch cap, which again is just a metal piece that's been threaded that can actually seal off one end of it, and you will need one two inch T. And again, all these pieces can be in black iron and they should be available, available at your local plumbing store or your local home improvement store. So that's pretty much it. Outside of adding your hair dryer, this is how it's gonna go together. Now, 
please understand that the links on this pipe are fuzzy basically meaning that if they're a little bit longer a little bit shorter uh, you can get away with that i'm going to show you how to actually put the whole thing together and uh, you'll get an idea of where you can get away with you know there really isn't you know th this isn't a package deal that it's not ikea you don't buy this in a kit so a lot of the pieces or you're going to have access to maybe a little bit different you're going to have to use a little bit of common sense to put something together for you that will work a little bit of trial and error never hurt anybody so let's show you how to actually stack one of these bad boys together and we're going to go here to the fantastic drawing board again let me clear a little spot out here okay and you're going to start out with your brake rotor now if you're looking from the top down on your brake rotor, it's going to look like this. It's going to have a depression here in the middle. This is going to be about two inch deep, and you're going to have a lug pattern of this is where it actually bolts uh, to the truck itself, and there'll be a, about a two inch hole right here. So what happens is this actually bolts to the car through these bolt holes, and that's how you're going to mount your air system. Uh, so we're going to take this and we're going to turn that little bit sideways, grease it up real good. You can smell what I'm cooking. So if you look at it from the side, brake rotor has this funky little channeling right in here. Uh, the pot, what we're going to use for pot, comes down like this. And of course, if, if you kind of did cut through, that two inch hole is right there. What you're going to do is you're going to take your two inch flange. That flange will actually bolt up to, if you're lucky, the bolt holes on the bottom of the brake rotor. You just run your bolts right through there. Now, if it doesn't line up perfectly, that's no problem. You can actually drill that rotor. Uh, should be pretty easy and line the holes up manually. And again, four bolts will do everything you need to hold this piece into place. So flange is bolted to the bottom of the brake rotor. Uh, you will take your first six inch piece of threaded pipe it will come down, it will screw into the flange, and then it will screw into the T-joint. Like so. The second piece of six inch will screw into that. And then your two inch cap will screw onto here. The 12 inch piece simply fits here. And this can be duct taped to your air source, which can be your V-Dial Sassoon hairdryer. That's a hairdryer for those of you that are interested. V-Dial Sassoon. What's up? And a little bit of duct tape. So that's pretty much it. That is, in fact, your brake drum, uh, brake, excuse me, brake rotor forge. It's been so many years we've been saying brake drum, and uh, it likes it's almost automatic, so you have to forgive me. At any point, if I say brake drum, I mean brake rotor. Got it? Good. So what happens from here is you can actually come in and actually add some blocks. Now, if you're just really to kind of go with this bad boy, you can take a pair of cinder blocks and stack this bad boy up on the ground, these cinder blocks. These are skinny spinning blocks. They've been on the Weight Watchers, Weight Watchers program. So make them a little fatter over here. Do a little fat shaming for the center blocks. And um, that's how it goes. It's, it, that's really all it is. This is not the most stable setup in the world, and it certainly is not the most easy to use. And the biggest thing here is that um, there's plenty of upgrades and additions that need to be made to this, but um, you're starting to get into that sliding glass door. Now, that is the most basic setup. Uh, a couple of the upgrades I would tell you that you might want to look at making before you start. If you can find the, the mower deck off of an, all, an old lawnmower and cut a big enough hole out of there, this thing really needs some sort of sheet metal table uh, to extend the sides. Now, I know we talked about in the box of dirt forge that the reason that we made it three foot by three foot so that you had extra fuel that you could kind of pack up onto here. And that is really important with the brake rotor forge because this is usually only about eight, nine inches across, maybe 10, depending on your rotor. That is not a lot of fuel and to get a good deep fire in that thing. And when I say a good and deep fire, I mean, you know, something that's about that deep, that's got enough fuel to last because you are just perpetually 
trying to sprinkle new fuel onto the top of this thing to, to keep the coking process going. Uh, when if you had a table, you could actually have high mounded sides that would give you a good supply of that green fresh coal coming in to supply your coke. So some sort of table would always be beneficial. It needs to be sheet metal of some sort. Uh, when I went to Louisiana, like I said, we used a mower deck for a table. Um, you know, whatever works. But with this particular arrangement, try to find something to add a table. And, and that's it. That is absolute bare bones, basics how you can go about it. Um, you'll get the brake rotor for free. Uh, the flange and all the piping will cost you. Um, you know, be prepared to spend $45 uh, on, that, on that piping. Yeah, that stuff is not cheap. It's actually pretty expensive. Uh, for what you buy all that piping for, you could buy all the lumber that you needed for two dirt, bo for, dirt box forges. But again, uh, all of this, and one of the things I want to stress again, all of these forges are make-do forges next to the, the proper forges that we have out there, the, the welded steel fire pots with a nice table, with air control, all of this stuff is, is make do. Um, you know, when, you are, when you're out in the war zone, yes, you can throw rocks at the enemy, yes, you can throw sticks, uh, but a gun is really the thing to have. And you can sit there and kind of do the whole mental masturbation thing, go, well, can we take a cat and tape a knife to it, yes, yes you can, and it, it, it may work. However, I would prefer to have a 1911. So, same idea. This stuff works. Um, I can sit here and tell you as a professional that I would always go for the appropriate tool. I'd spend the money for it, but a lot of you guys just starting out, you know, half the fun in this is trying stuff out. Um, that gets a little excessive, gets a little excessive, gentlemen, because you don't need to reinvent the wheel. I, I have to admit that the, some of the uh, ideas that I get through mail are, are quite staggering, and I have to, to kind of hold back my sarcasm because these people are asking, are asking from a place of absolute honesty, and we have to respect that. But the, and and then, then there are some that are just stupid. There's no way around it. But they're few and far between. So as a beginner, if you see something like this, give it a go, give it a try. You know, if you get out there and it screws up, great. Now you know what questions to ask. But that's it, guys. Uh, pretty simple setup. You can go to the store and buy it off the shelf. Uh, always an easier situation. And again, if you guys have any questions I can answer for you, uh, leave them down here in the comments or shoot me an email. I'm always happy to try to steer you guys right. But outside of that, hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you guys a little bit later. Oh, how rude of me. Hey, if you like this crap, hit, 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 hit the button wherever the hell it is. The, 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 subscribe, the subscribe button. Hit it. You, you hit it. <laughs>